Blah, hell, I'm just gonna start again. Hi, it's Mo here and welcome to our 2020 year in review video where I'm gonna be going through some of the highs and lows of our year uh, this year. I'm also gonna explain some of the challenges that we faced as a business just so we can share that and show how we've overcome those challenges which sort of everyone's been faced with in 2020. Before we jump in, please remember to hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're trying to get to 100 subscribers. It takes literally one second. It doesn't cost you anything and really helps us. So if you can hit the red subscribe button, that would really help us out. And before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say our lows, obviously, we've had highs and lows this year. Um, some of the stuff that we've been faced with hasn't come close to what's been experienced by the retail and hospitality sectors this year. Um, and broadly speaking, the construction and property industries have been able to stay relatively open, albeit with some delays in supply chains and some uh, challenges with contractors and things like that. But um, broadly speaking, the industry, we have been very lucky that the industry has been able to stay open. Uh, so we're extremely grateful for that. Um, but there has been an impact on our business, um, not quite as much as as has been seen by retail and hospitality, but certainly there has been an impact. So I was gonna do a nice sort of six minute video, I was thinking sort of 30 seconds for each month within the year to sort of explain uh, the highs and some of the challenges and stuff that we faced in, in that month. But looking back over the year, it hasn't happened like that, it hasn't happened smoothly, like, you know, January we had this, February we had this, March we had this challenge, April we did this. Um, it all seems to be concentrated around uh, three or four months within within the year, which is which is quite interesting actually. And looking back on reflection, um, it's it's obviously easy to see why that was. But um, I thought that was quite interesting. So most of the activity um, in terms of both highs and also challenges that we've had in the business has been um, centered around a few specific months, which we'll go into now. So the start of our year was fairly quiet, certainly for me, as I was away on honeymoon uh, at the beginning of twenty twenty in January. Um, so fairly sort of quiet start to the year. We just finished our Wyndham Hall project. So full focus was on getting the, the occupancy up there and getting tenants in to enjoy the, enjoy the property there. Uh, so that was very much the focus at the, the beginning of the year. As we moved into March, we started uh, the teams working from home uh, some of the week. And then obviously uh, as the government messaging increased, uh, we then mandated that everyone had to work from home. And, uh, and then as we moved into April, that's really when sort of our year started to um, show the challenges that were coming as a result of COVID. So um, we'll go through some of those now. In April, uh, we were supposed to be completing on Regent House, which is our conversion of a 32 bed um, ex student house, one of the largest student houses, private student houses in the UK into a 33 bed HMO that split across four, uh, four properties, three eight beds and a nine bed. Um, so that was supposed to be completing. So we had exchanged on that uh, at the end of 2019 and we got in for planning, which we, which we subsequently got the planning approval on. Um, and we were then going to complete on that purchase in April. And I think the date actually was the 2nd of April um, 2020. So this was 10 days after the Prime Minister announced the full lockdown, uh, what we now know was lockdown number one. Um, so because of what happened with lockdown, the financial markets, lending, um, the, the funding was paused on that specific completion, but we were legally obliged to complete on the property. So when you exchange contracts, you're then agreeing that you're gonna complete on a certain day for a certain certain value. So that was a really big, sort of a really big thing for us. We were, we were, we were at, at, the, at that point at risk of losing the um, exchange money, so the deposit, legal fees, all the money we'd spent on planning, getting the project through planning, um, all the consultants, all the surveys, all of that money potentially could have gone down the drain because in theory, the vendors could just um, pull the contract back and it, either keep the building or sell it to someone else um, and keep the money that we put down as the, um, as the deposit as sort of compensation for their financial losses as a result of not being, not being able to sell, sell that property. So real risk of, of losing real money if we didn't complete on the project. So what we did is we negotiated a 12 week extension, didn't know if 12 weeks was gonna be enough at, at that time, so no one knew what was gonna happen, but we thought 12 weeks, see how sort of COVID pans out and hopefully the, the lending will come back on stream within that time. Um, and. So 
So we negotiated with the vendors um, via the solicitor and via the agent. So the result was that it bought some time for the financial markets to stabilise a bit and at least understand the, the COVID situation a bit more, not necessarily be through the other out, through, out the other end of it, but at least to understand what, uh, what was happening, financial markets and, and lenders don't like uncertainty. Um, so that was obviously a lot of uncertainty at that time. We, we got 12 week extension um, and I'll let you know later in the video how that 12 week extension panned out. Uh, another big thing that we were trying to land in April was the refinance of Wyndham Hall, which was our um, conversion of an ex non-conformist chapel into 30 HMO rooms split across six flats. So we were supposed to complete on the refinance of that and pay back some of our investors at that point from the refinance monies. Um, the refinance was delayed due to COVID again, similar reasons. So what we did is we picked up the phone to our lenders um, and just had a really honest conversation with them. Just said it was going to be delayed, it was going to happen. Um, they really appreciated the honesty and um, actually having that open dialogue and actually it really built a lot of trust and um, a really good rapport with our lenders. We really had a good relationship with them, but to I think from a lender's point of view, seeing how people that borrow money react in times of uncertainty um, can really show you what their true colours are like and, and can show you how they deal with difficult situations. Um, and I think we, we did ourselves proud in that and just had a really honest conversation. Um, and I know a lot of lenders had lent money to, to other people and hadn't, hadn't necessarily had an open dialogue um, with them. And you know when things go quiet, that's when you need to start being worried. But we were very open, we had an open dialogue we renegotiated terms, we got an extension on the loan, um, and then we managed to actually land the, um, the, the refinance a little bit later on. And then in June 2020, we exchanged on Trinity House, which is our project where we're um, converting a former hospital into eight apartments and four houses. Um, so we exchanged on that project in June, and we also completed on the delayed refinance of Wyndham Hall as well. So that all happened in June. Um, in July, earlier, uh, earlier in the video, I talked about Regent House and how we were um, supposed to complete on the purchase on the 2nd of April, which was just sort of 10 days after lockdown number one in the UK. Um, the deadline for the completion was the 2nd of July, and actually on the 2nd of July, we did complete on the purchase of Regent House. So that 12-week extension that we negotiated with the vendors um, worked well, and we were able to get the lending over the line. In October, I was privileged enough to join the board, which is sort of a high level mentoring and masterminding group for uh, property and other business professionals. Um, real pleasure to be able to join a lot of high performers on there uh, and a real asset to have in our business, especially at a time like this where there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uh, changes, a lot of external uh, factors um, coming into play in, in the business. So real asset to have, have on board and having our toolkit um, and, and really good fun um, sharing highs and lows with, with other people, um, other high performers in the, uh, in the property space. In November, we got our planning granted on Trinity House. It did go to committee, but was unanimously approved in the end, and that's for the conversion of the existing building into eight apartments and uh, for four houses in the annex building. Um, we also had an offer accepted on a new 24 unit scheme in Devon, which is coming in the new year, and hopefully I'll be able to share some more information on that once we've exchanged on, on that project. And in November again, like I was saying, we had a couple of uh, two or three busy months where all of the activity and all the challenges seemed to happen. Um, and in November, we were privileged enough to win an award for Wyndham Hall at the Property Investors Award, and that was HMO Property Deal of the Year um, over six rooms. So really, really happy to pick up that award. A bit gutted that there wasn't an award ceremony, but obviously given the circumstances, we, we can't really have an award show at the moment, but hopefully we'll be able to celebrate the win uh, next year along with next year's winners. Um, and then in December, so this month, after several delays due to COVID and sort of in relation to the supply chain issues that a lot of um, people in construction and development have, have experienced this year and also con uh, contractor related delays, we finally reached practical completion on our Oyster Catcher Court project, which is the conversion of a former hotel into 10 high-end apartments. And some of those have got really amazing sea views as well. Um, some of those units are already reserved and the first residents will be moving in um, within the next few weeks. So as you can see, a pretty challenging year for KHP Group. Uh, we had a fair amount of growth, but also a fair amount of challenges that were, were thrown our way as well. Um, a quote I was reminded of today, which I really liked, was everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Um, just really speaking about perseverance and just carrying on. Um, and not admitting defeat and just
just whatever you're going through, just keep pushing on through it. So that was our 2020 year in review. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to hit subscribe, have a safe festive season and we'll see you in the new year.